Hello friends, welcome back to part two in my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. Loki can't wait to join in the conversation. He is barking already uh, from his spot. He wants to see more charts. We reviewed the first two charts in part one of my forecast review video series showing all the deliveries by quarter for Tesla and showing just the sexy deliveries S3, X, and Y. I'm going to continue the tour of my forecast models charts. Let me click the uh, share desktop button. Well, if you see Loki get up and move, it's because he still has breakfast to eat. He's eaten some of his breakfast so far. Eat your breakfast, buddy. Uh, but I don't force him to eat his breakfast. Sometimes I'll set some kibbles out in front of him like I just did to see if I can get him interested in eating more of his food. And if he eats it all, he gets a treat. Yes? Good boy, Loki. All right, so let's share my desktop. That's the most recent chart that I've shown you. Uh, so we reviewed chart four and chart one in part one. And now in part two, we'll review chart two and chart five. <laughs> what? Why are they numbered that way? Because that's the numbers that Excel gave them when I created these charts a long time ago. But I keep them updated with my latest and uh, uh, my, my uh, most current version of my forecast. All right, so this one is showing just Model 3 and Model Y. And instead of vertical columns, I've got horizontal bars here with a bright white Model 3 and then the gray Model Y bars and labels on here. So what do you see? You see the Model 3 numbers growing over time instead of being cannibalized by Model Y. You know, that was the expectation from Tesla Q, the short seller community, the people betting against Elon Musk and Tesla were saying, hey, if Tesla ever releases this Model Y, it'll be the stupidest decision they ever made because it's just going to cannibalize Model 3. People are going to buy less Model 3s once Model Y is available because it'll be bigger and people like crossover SUVs better than they like small or mid-size uh, luxury sports sedans. Well, uh, you can see that uh, the sales numbers in Q4 131,000 is, uh, by my estimate, the second most Model 3s Tesla sold in any quarter ever, uh, with Q4 of 2021 being the highest number ever. This white bar is the longest one so far. And I'm forecasting even greater numbers in the future as the Highland refresh comes out. Uh, right, Loki? Loki wanted me to remind you that uh, there is a rumored Project Highland upgrade coming for Model 3 uh, where they will um, do some significant upgrading of Model 3. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what Tesla tells us about uh, what exactly you get for that. And uh, the gray is the Model Y. You can see as these ramp at more factories, I expect that Tesla will be selling more of them. And it's not just my expectation. This one, the 257,000 here, is an actual from Q4 of 2022. So, I mean, Tesla reported global combined deliveries of Model 3 and Y of, you know, what is that, 390,000 almost? So, d divide it however you want, uh, but the total of those two is that amount that got reported. I'm just... Um, doing the same thing Troy Tesla-like does, trying to figure out, okay, how much does it make sense uh, to have been Model 3 versus Model Y? And as Berlin and Austin ramp up their uh, production of Model Y, Tesla will be delivering more of these as time goes by. And those may not be the only Model Y production locations. As time goes by, Tesla may announce more factories uh, producing more models. Who knows which models will be produced at those new factories. We'll just have to wait and see. Then chart five is next. This one is just showing totals. So instead of showing by model, let me click away there. Uh, 
These are the total quarterly production and deliveries. Again, the actuals run through here, through Q4 of 2022. And then for the rest of these quarters, you're looking at what I'm forecasting to happen uh, with production and deliveries. Why does this sometimes step back a little bit? Uh, one of the reasons for that is that in Shanghai, you only get 13 weeks of production one quarter per year, quarter three of every year. So you can expect to get only 12 weeks worth of production or less uh, in the other quarters. So uh, people sometimes ask me, hey, is that the peak? And then from here, it's going to be all down. <laughs> no, uh, that, that's not what you take away from this. You see, uh, every year I've got a little bit of a step back forecast from Q3 to Q4. Uh, just for the number of production weeks, which is how I build up to my forecast for production. And what else do I want to say about this? Maybe I just want to keep this video short and say that's the end of part two. Loki seems to settle back down into his bed and uh, stay tuned. Uh, for part three, when I'll review more of the charts that I have lined up for you. If you're not signed up for uh, my uh, YouTube channel, you can go ahead and do that now by subscribing and click the notification bell to get alerted when I post fresh content. Uh, I'll put a subscribe button over here. And uh, it's free to like the video or to comment. Say, hey, great charts, James. Uh, thank you to my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, who supported me at the highest support tier when they joined my YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next one.